know, we've been campaigning for Senate seats since uh, really last year. We looked at this seat starting as soon as we got home last year. We had to keep it quiet because we didn't want uh, anybody to undermine our, our plans once, once we decided to go. And to kind of give you an idea of what it's like to go down deep in the south of Texas, what it's like to campaign as a Republican, I want to tell you a story that I heard. And hopefully this will give you an idea. This Republican decided to run for office in deep, deep South Texas. And so he decided he was going to go and do what every candidate needs to do to win elections. He was going to go block vote. But in his case, he decided to start out in the rural areas. So he goes out and he runs upon this farmhouse, this ranch, this ranch home, and he sees a man working out there, and as he walks up to the fence, he calls him over, hey, mister. The elderly man looks at him with some curious eyes and says, yes, sir. He says, may I speak with you? He says, well, yes, sir. Come on in. Walks in and says, hi, my name is Joe, and I'm running for office as a Republican. The elderly man looks at him with curiosity, a Republican? He says, don't move. I'll be right back. Runs off to the farm to the farmhouse saying, Mom, Mom! And he says, What's all the fussing? He says, Mom, come quickly. There's a Republican here. A uh, what? She said, A Republican? By golly, they exist, don't they? <laughs> well, hurry, come here, come here. Some see it for yourself. So they rush over there and she looks at him and says, By golly, Daddy, he is a Republican. And then he says, well, what can we do for you? He said, well, can I give you my campaign speech? That way you can understand why, why you should vote for me. He said, well, absolutely. And so he begins to look for a place so he can speak for the platform. And so being that the, they're out by the, by the barn, he looks inside the barn, he finds three bags of manure. <laughs> so he sets them up, stands up there, and delivers his message. Campaign message, the one that every candidate should have memorized. Three minute message. And when he finishes, the farmer looks at him and says, By golly, I've never heard a Republican give a speech before. And he says, Well, sir, yeah, I've never given a Republican speech from a Democratic platform. <laughs>
it is time that we no longer just talk the talk, but we do the walk. Amen. All of you that are candidates here today, raise your hand for just a moment. Just a moment. Just hold them up till I tell you to put them down. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at these men and women. Take a look at them. And I can tell you that there's one of them that needs your help. They need your check, and they need your body, and your mind, and your soul <coughs> dedicated to the cause that they represent, which is our freedom. Now, you pick one today, please. Right. Pick one. Thank you very much. And as Mike says, you work like a slay dog. And you commit to the causes that we've talked about here all morning long, and what the Attorney General has said. Because if we don't show up, if we don't pay the price, then what's left? Now I'm finishing the story. Thomas Jefferson. Over 200 years ago, men locked themselves up in a guarded home. And they were debating at that time whether or not to sign the Declaration of Independence. And they were arguing with each other about what was at stake here. What they were going to do. They were going to, what? Freedom? What is that? And one said, but we have to pledge our sacred honor. The other said, but we have to pledge our lives. And the other one said, we have to pledge our fortunes. And what awaits us? And they said, a noose? An axe? That's treason! And they debated for hours. But the Declaration sat by itself on the table, not being signed by anybody. And as the day dragged on, a man from the balcony stands up out of the shadows. And he tells them, Sign the document. Sign the document as if the noose is around your neck at this very moment. Sign the document. Because for the mechanic in the workshop, it means opportunity. For the slave in the mind, it means freedom. And for the world, it means a beacon of light. Sign the document. For that document will outlive all of us and will be the guiding light for mankind. To remind them of what the sacred scriptures say that these rights come from God. And exhausted, the man falls down, Thomas Jefferson wrote. And the man, inspired by his eloquence, called to duty, rushed to the table and signed, began to sign the document, the Declaration of Independence. And as they turned to thank him, he was nowhere to be found. And they asked each other, who was that? Did you know who that is? The other said, no, did you know who that is? <coughs> who was that man? And they were in a guarded home with the doors open. And nowhere to be found. What would the world look like today? if those brave men had not signed it. It would be a much different place than we have. So today, my fellow people, I believe we have a call, as Reagan called, a time of destiny, for us to be reminded of these fundamental truths of our duty not only to ourselves and our families, but to each other. Because the world awaits America. And if we fail now, if we fail to stand up and do what is morally right, if we fail to stand up and do what is the, the message the whole world is crying out, freedom, freedom. 
and we had failed. But those brave men did in that locker room. We have failed what those brave young men gave up during the great battle of the Civil War. We have failed our heroes from World War II. We have failed our dedicated soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan who have given up their blood, their sweat, and their tears for the cause of freedom because we don't want to get up and get involved. Of all elections, this is it. There may not be an America if Barack Obama wins it. There may not be a state of Texas that's red if we don't fight the state. So today, I implore you, behind the cloud of witnesses from all these men and women who have devoted their lives to this cause, who are looking down upon us. Let's do the right. Get in. And let's win in 2012. Thank you very much.